I tell your neighbor, they are not sparing us this evening. I'm going to talk to you as mature people. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, there's a difference between time, earthly, chronos, and time, heavenly, kairos. The timings, just reduce it a little bit. The timings of the earth are different from the timings of heaven. Bible says one day in the house of the Lord haven't you read it it's as a thousand years I think it means if a man learns to live in the day of the Lord that man will instruct a thousand years that one will speak into a thousand years. Of course, you read your Bible, and the Bible says, the prophet says, in the day of the Lord, I had this vision. But many people do not really understand what the Bible calls the day of the Lord. Without understanding how to stand in that place and how to harness the presence and maximize that provision in the spirit, you are bound to do in 20 years what other people do in minutes. You're bound to do in 30 years what other people do in days. A portion of scripture tells us this just to number our days that we might apply unto our hearts and to your wisdom. And what is that wisdom? The, the word there for numbering is the word to appoint or to speak into. Teach us how to speak. Not teach us to speak, but teach us how to speak into our days that we might apply our hearts unto your wisdom because there is wisdom your heart cannot be applied to until you learn to speak into the days ahead of you. And with that is the true essence of the redemption of time. The Bible speaks of the children of Israel. Moses says, that when he wanted to let the children of Israel to lead to the promised land, the Bible says he led them not in the way of the Philistine, even though it was shorter. For, the Bible says, he knew perhaps they would see war, the Bible says, and out of fear turned to Egypt. But what many people don't know, that it was a 12-day journey from Egypt after crossing the sea to the promised land. And what was supposed to take them 12 days of a journey took them 40 years. And the death of a whole generation and the birth of another generation. It is possible to meet God in such a way that you could find yourself doing in 30 years what by wisdom you could have done in two weeks. That is why we teach the redemption of time. Some people ask us, why is your ministry growing so fast? What's the secret of the growth of your ministry? And I could simply tell them, it's the redemption of time. We grow by average about 500 members every week. <laughs> and above. Are you following what I'm saying? Members, not visitors. To the glory of God. That's just one aspect of life. There are many other aspects of life where we, by his wisdom, we can redeem the time. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And because we are running out of time as the church, we cannot afford to speak as those who have time. Some of you are already out of time. You don't know. But this evening, God is going to calibrate you. <laughs> He's going to calibrate you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My mandate this evening is in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. 
Paul, I think I will begin um, from verses 1. Paul says, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace which is given to me, you word, given me to you word, if you have heard of the grace God has given me for your sake, this is now Paul speaking, how by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote in a few words, Whereby, when you read, you, the Bible says, may understand my knowledge in the mystery. God wanted to grant some sort of grace to the church. He wanted to give, a, no, a revelation to the church. And because he wanted to give a certain revelation to the church, he bestowed some grace on a man called Paul. In fact, in one account, he says, as a wise master builder was given unto me the grace to lay the foundation of the gospel. And he said, let, listen, listen to this. He said, let no other foundation be laid save this which I have laid. Meaning, Paul went as deep as we can go when it comes to foundation. We only build upon Paul. Such an authority. Such a grace. That was his part, and I'm going to come back to the part a bit later. Paul's part was very clearly defined as revealed through scripture. Now he tells us, he, by revelation, God made known unto him the mystery. There was a secret God revealed to Paul, whereby he asks you, the Gentile, to read so you will know or understand his knowledge in this mystery which in other ages not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That means this thing being revealed was not known by the men of old like it is, it's known now. First Peter tells us of which salvation the prophets of old did speak and searched out diligently what manner of the Spirit of Christ in the significance or the signification of his suffering, the death, and the glory that should follow after. And the Bible tells us, and to whom it was revealed, that not unto they, but unto us, they did minister these things, which are now preached unto you by the gospel. Which things, the Bible says, the angels desire to look into. But this thing I'm giving you, even angels right now have gathered to hear. No, no, that's the Bible, it's not me. That's what the Bible says. These things angels desire to look into. Present continuous. So they say, but the angels dwell with God. Oh yes, they dwell with God, but they have never had the experience of God dwelling in them. You see, that is why the Bible says they are ministers of the heirs of, sal the heirs of salvation. Angels are ministers to us because we have the privilege of having God in us. Every time we speak, some angels want to hear. Because there are things only God can release through us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not every understanding of divine oracle comes from angelic places. There are things that are for us. The Bible has said these things the angels desire to look into. There are some men or women, when they start speaking, angels gather to write notes. It's not pride. It's God's revelation of love for mankind. That's how much God loves us. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So this thing Paul is talking about here, he says, it was not known in the ages past like it is known now. And as it is being revealed by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of what? His promise in Christ by the gospel. Paul says, Where over made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power and to me whom am less than the least of the saints has been given to me 
to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by him. Let's go slowly here. One which was least of all saints, God has given him the grace to preach the unsearchable riches. These riches are of the revelation of the mystery, but they are expressed in God's wisdom. Okay? Follow me very keenly. Now, the Bible tells us to the intent that as I continue to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, as I unveil this revelation, this mystery hidden from the ages past, to the intent that now and to, listen, the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Let me read it for you in the New Living Translation, verses 10. God's purpose in all this in revealing and giving you this mystery, showing you everything that has to be shown through the whatever Paul is giving us. He says, God's purpose in all of this, New Living Translation, was to use the church, listen, to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authority in, authorities in heavenly places. Follow me keenly. As he reveals whatever he reveals to us, the mysteries that are being demystified by this man Paul, as God has revealed to him in the burden he has placed on him, the things the angels are required to, to, to look into, the thing that all the prophets of the, of the old, the, the Isaiahs, the Hezekiahs, the Ezekiels, never understood as it is and being understood right now as God has revealed it to his prophets and apostles. This to the end, the, the, the end of all of this, the purpose of all of this is to unveil the manifold wisdom, the diverse wisdoms of God to all the rulers and principalities in heavenly places, whether godly or ungodly. Now, what are the principalities and rulers in the heavenly places waiting or anticipate or what is the biggest threat to the principalities and powers and rulers in heavenly places? What is the biggest threat? The church. the church. And what is the biggest weapon in the church? Prayer? Prayer? Fasting? The manifold wisdoms of God. Oh, the devil fears praying Christians. No, he doesn't. The devil does not fear praying Christian. I know Christians who are praying right now, but they're being choked. And they're going to die praying. The devil fears a fasting Christian. I know Christians who have fasted and failed. Let me tell you what a devil fears. The devil fears a Christian which understands the manifold wisdoms of God. That's so unconventional to preach. Because many a time in the church of Jesus Christ we're preaching the doctrines of men as the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we think that you can pray. I'm not against prayer. I'm a praying man. I perhaps pray more than many people in this room. I'm not boasting. But I have seen people who have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and failed to get a hold of God's best. I have seen it with my eyes. I, the people since I was a child they were intercessors then the ages of 60 or 70 they're still praying 
And notwithstanding, a few short fixes have come their way to minister comfort for their labor in God. But they have not lived to see God's best. I'm not against prayer. Again, I say, it's through that wisdom that true prayer is birthed because you pray in the revelation of that wisdom. But notwithstanding, if God has said that when I was revealing whatever I was revealing through the manifold graces given to Paul, to unravel the mystery that was hidden from the ages, the prophets of old did not know. And I thought, this is now God speaking, the only thing to give through Paul to the church to defeat the principalities and powers and dominions of this world I needed to reveal through him the manifold wisdom that comes from my person. Because with that wisdom, every principality will bow. Every ruler will bow. Every dominion will bow. Every power will bow. Every spirit of wickedness in high places will bow. Remember the Bible says our weapon, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal but they are mighty in Christ. We do not wage war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, domin uh, dominions, and spirits of wickedness in high places. That's our true war. That's our true war. Now, if our true war is with these beings, Jesus has given us the antidote through the person of Paul and said, what the church needed predominantly was the revelation of my manifold wisdom. The many-sidedness of my wisdom. The multi-facets of my wisdom. The diverse realms of interpretation concerning my wisdom. That if the church can have this, it might be known to the principalities and, and rulers of the spiritual realm by the church. By the church. Let me give you an example. The first time Jesus opened a blind eye. The first time Jesus opened a blind eye, the Bible tells us it was the first time in human history that an eye had been opened. Every miracle had happened from the creation of the world to that point. But the Bible tells us it was the first time a blind eye was opened. Before that, people never knew that in the miracles God does, blind eyes open. It began with Jesus the first time. And it's recognized even in scripture that it was the first time. Never had we ever seen it before. This is what happened. Jesus walked to a blind eye and communicated to it with such a divine authority. Because blindness is a spirit. I've opened blind eyes before. But when I'm praying for blind people, I say, I rebuke that blind spirit. Because God does not create people blind. No, it's a blindness that comes. The Bible tells us he was crippled from his mother's womb. Not before. His version before was not of a crippled word. Being all good and perfect gifts come from God. Let me tell you, there's no such thing as God created me crippled. Or created a man crippled. God has created every man whole. But the attack can come in the womb. That is why I tell women, before you conceive, or when you are going to conceive, learn the language that speaks to that life in your womb. You can never underestimate the power God has given these beings. They are very powerful beings. At one point, a woman was pregnant, and God said, in you two nations rage. When there was still as a seed in the father, there were not yet nations. When they entered the woman's womb, they became nations. That means... If that woman knew how to pray right, she was going to pray for the posterity, for the preservation of posterity, for the years to come concerning certain nations. That's why when you conceive, you learn to pray 
I have a pastor friend, a son of mine, a son of mine. His wife uh, uh, conceived. And uh, the blood started coming out and, you know, the doctors told them they'd lost the baby. And they came to me. And they said, we've lost the baby. But we have refused to believe it. That's the doctor's report. Oh my God, I was charged. I was charged. So we started praying together. The next few days where it was expected for this being to fall out. As the blood kept coming out, they kept telling the lady, this is evil coming out. God is cleansing your womb. Apostle Felix, the heart that was not beating, started beating again. But this, the devil was going to rob a woman's seed from her womb. So the attacks come from in there. Because the womb is a world. Praise the Lord. But let me continue here. If God knew that the only way I can reveal my power to the principalities and rulers of this world was through wisdom. He had to define it through the demonstration. So Jesus comes to a blind man and rebukes a blind spirit and this man sees. Now, to you, it was a miracle of receiving sight. To hell, to the spirits, devils, cohorts, it was a new understanding of, the, of a certain wisdom in God that can open a blind eye. To those which were watching was an impartational learning lesson. But to the principalities, they realized, now this is new. Because from then on, eyes started opening. Jesus opened that portal. He opened that gate. He opened that realm. From then on, any man could enter that realm because a certain understanding came to the church by what was working through this man. This is the man the Bible speaks of in whom is hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The person of Jesus. It's those treasures of wisdom and knowledge that we demonstrate and manifest the wisdom of God through the demonstration of his spirit and power. That without that wisdom, you cannot fully manifest his power. Am I communicating? This is important for you to know because I'm still on the surface. <laughs> I've not yet started preaching. <laughs> I have not yet started preaching. I'm just trying to introduce you to the beginning because I don't want to lose you as we go deeper. Manifold wisdom of God. Every trouble you see in the church is a lack of a certain wisdom. That's why the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for a lack of wisdom. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, sorry. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But yet I discovered something. In the pattern, in this pattern, knowledge is lost. Did you get it? In this pattern, knowledge is what? Lust. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But the Bible says in Proverbs, with wisdom a house is built. With understanding, a house is established. And by knowledge, all pleasant riches fill the house. You cannot fill a house which is not established. Praise the Lord. You cannot fill a house with pleasant riches when it's not yet built first. But the Bible says with wisdom, a house is built. With understanding, it's established. 
And with knowledge, all pleasant riches fill the house. Now imagine you're the temple of the Lord. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom precedes understanding and understanding precedes knowledge. The problem with our generation is they're seeking a knowledge of whose understanding they carry not. And who has wisdom, they carry no understanding. Did you get it? When the Bible says wisdom is a principal thing, God for every precept and context wants to give you the wisdom of a thing, the understanding of a thing, and then the knowledge of a thing. That's the order of the divine spirit of God. God, did I lose you? God has designed your life to begin first from the realm of wisdom into understanding and then knowledge. That's the order of the spirit. Not your definition. Put out what you think you know if you can't prove it by scripture. And allow me to prove what I can prove by scripture. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, a house is established. And with knowledge, it is filled with pleasant riches. You cannot put a television and a chair and a table in a house that is not built. Am I making sense? Neither can you put that in a house that has no pillars to be established. Because understanding is the realm of, you know, it's, it's, it's the place of equipping pillars, of, of establishing or erecting pillars on this house. Now imagine you are a house of God. The ministry is the house of God. The anointing on your life serves under some sort of house. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It means that when God sends an oracle, he wants first that you connect to the wisdom and understanding of that oracle before knowledge comes through. That is why we have two kinds of knowledge. We have that which is progressive gnosis and we have epignosis. The knowledge of thing, the things of God, both ethical and divine. The complete and perfect knowledge of things of both ethical and divine. That's a big gnosis. It's also a kind of knowledge. It is complete. It doesn't know because they taught it last Tuesday. It knows because it has something old. Its language is old. It's not just a seeker and a learner. It's a scribe as well. And it speaks of the scribe which has been instructed in the way of the kingdom. And is likened to a householder who out of him flows both new and old. Who has read that portion of scripture before? Don't worry if you don't understand. Your spirit is understanding. Don't worry. Say my head is not. Don't worry about your head. You just allow things to enter. Matthew 13, 52, therefore he said unto them, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that has, is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. There's an experience God can give you that takes you to the end of all things. The book of Psalms says, I have been to the end of all perfection. And the word of God became broader. When I went to the end of all things, the word of God became broader. When I went to the end of all perfection, the word of God became so deep. It became so demystified. That's the realm where you don't open the Bible. That's the realm where the Bible opens to you. There are things you will never learn in a lifetime by sitting under a good teacher. There are things you can only receive by an experience that you can have with God. The problem with our generation is we don't pay the price of that consecration. Yet we see with every man used of God, even Paul of the New Testament, he goes to Damascus after the consecration, he starts preaching in Damascus, Jesus is Lord, God tells him, you have not gone through that wilderness of consecration to give you the full counsel of the mystery that was hid from the ages past. He snatched him out of Damascus and took him into Arabia. 
When he came back to Arabia, he says, three years was it, and then I went to Jerusalem. I submitted this message to James and Peter, which were apostles before me, and to no other apostle did I submit these things. Fifteen days, the Bible says, he abode with Peter, trying to explain to him what he had received in the consecrations of Arabia. Because some of these things do not come in the most watered places. They come in the driest places of consecration. They don't understand why Jesus had to go 40 days in the wilderness. They don't understand why God had to separate Abraham from his own kin and Keith and threw him in Canaan, which was a dry place. They don't understand why God separated Moses. Th those separations have always been there for every man or woman who is going to be mightily used of God. Because three things happen in that consecration. Three things happen in that wilderness. God starts to try you into maturity. Number one. Number two, God starts to teach you himself. And number three, he kills you. Because it's dangerous to be alive with a certain form of power. There's nothing as dangerous as being alive with a certain kind of power. That is why when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, they received fallen wisdom, forbidden wisdom. And God knew if they eat of the tree of life, they're going to be so dangerous to deal with when they're already corrupted. There's certain graces God cannot allow you to access when you're not dispensed with a certain understanding. So you see Paul in Arabia. And from the time Paul comes out of Arabia, he's, an, he's another man. He didn't go to visit his cousin. God was dealing with him to show him something, to take him to the end of all things. The manifold wisdom of God is a revelation. It's not a progressive impartation. It's not something you teach every day until somebody understands it. It's an experience you take a man to. And when you get to that realm and feed of that grace, you come back for men. And as you come back for them, it doesn't mean you don't sharpen the saw, it doesn't mean you don't read or, 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 but everything you read is already connected to a very old experience. How do you know that what I'm telling you is true? Because you have the person of the Holy Spirit. He's a revealer of truth. If somebody thinks I'm a liar, yeah, he could have something else. You can carry a tenant. But if, if you're born of God, you'd know that what I'm speaking is true. Your inner witness. There's somebody telling you, this man is speaking something I know. I just didn't know how to say it. Amen. Some of you. Of course, there's another version here saying, uh, now this brother, me, I came, I have a problem. I, my landlord is on my case. Eh? <laughs> now this brother is talking about manifold wisdom. I'm looking for a job, brother. Excel conference. That one we shall explain it in another conference. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. Because how do I tell this person who is looking for food that there was a man with a certain anointing whom ravens fed? Ravens came from nowhere and started feeding a man manifold wisdom of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. But like I said, revelation is dimensional. There are different dimensions of revelation. Many people interpret revelation from generic thought. What it says is what it means. That's the first realm of, of interpreting revelation. But as you continue going deeper, God starts to go away from the generic and starts to express himself in the most hidden way because the deepest places of God are hidden. That's why the Bible speaks of him as the God which is in secret. There's a canopy that covers yet he dwells in a light because he wants this man to press on through in Revelation 2.17, he says, Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the seven churches. And to him that overcometh, he says, I shall give of the hidden manna. There are things you can't find in a textbook. 
There are songs you can't write because you can create rhyme and rhythm. There are, there, there, there are prophecies you can't give because you can see in the spirit or you know how to dream a dream. There are certain realities in God that can only be given because you have learned to transcend in certain places in the spirit. Am I communicating something? Because you have learned to walk a certain way. There is nothing the world is waiting for except whatever is new by God. God is not looking for cheap copies of great originals. If you cannot repeat a movie twice or once, some of you, what makes you think that our God would be boring? not to create a place of ministering to you every day deeper than you were ministered to yesterday. The Bible says in Corinthians, the person of the Holy Spirit searches out, the Amplified says, the bottomless things of God. The things that we're talking about are bottomless. You are a finite being with, yes, a finite being with an infinite spirit. Paul called it the treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of power might be of God. The excellence of power might be of God. But you see, it began with that treasure. And that treasure is in the person of the revelation of that manifold wisdom. That is why Jesus came as the wisdom and the power of God. That's the double-edgedness, the reconciliation of all things. You cannot demonstrate a power of whose wisdom you cannot reveal. That's not how God has designed heaven. That's not how he has designed life. That is not how he has designed purpose. That's not how he has designed destinies. He wants the equal measure of wisdom to come through the manifestation of that power. Because if you can manifest the power of whose wisdom you cannot reveal, that means you just stumbled on a thing. You see, he, he, sometimes he became a rock of offense and to whom men stumble. But anybody who stumbles is blind. A man with sight cannot stumble. He became a rock of offense because he stumbled them first like Paul. He kicked on the pricks first to meet him. But if his eyes had been opened, like Ananias had opened them, he would not have kicked against the pricks. He would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But that's what the Bible says. That this wisdom we preach is not the wisdom of this world which is brought to nothing. This is the wisdom that the principalities and rulers and spirits of all did not know. For had they known this wisdom, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Who has understood it? Because that means they would see this rock they will meet to embrace, not to stumble on. And I've seen that there are people who stumble on things. One time Isaiah is in his way of prayer. And then he stumbled in a meeting at the end of the meeting. He says, and then I heard a voice saying, whom shall we send? When you read the verses before, Isaiah was not in that meeting. He was just an available vessel. Then he said, send me Lord. And immediately he was what? Commissioned. But you see, there was no place of preparation. Now God has to consecrate his tongue. He has to align his understanding. He has to give him some sort of language. He has to give him a certain sort of wisdom to function. He is a man which prepared after the commission because he came late or he stumbled into it this commissioning was not an invitation it was a stumble that is why there are many people who cannot explain the grace operating on their lives because it was stumbled onto and you can stumble on a grace a man can speak something on your life <laughs> And the wind will blow you into a place of purpose. And you can move with a grace and that thing can carry you for 20, 30 years of your life. But if a man should sit you down and ask you, explain the pattern of this grace, you're not able to explain the pattern. The problem with that is if you can't explain the pattern, once you lose it, you don't know how to get it again. That is why you, you find people with things like, I used to have money, eh? but I don't know what happened. I, I was rich. My marriage was fine. One of the deepest secrets of preserving the anointing and the grace operating on your life is to understand the pattern that brings every grace on your life. Those are men who know how to find God. 
If you woke up tomorrow and took away all the members of my church and threw me somewhere in Swaziland and I opened the Bible, I know how to get them. I know how. They are not tricks. They are not seven steps. It's a certain understanding. I know how to speak to human spirit. I know how to communicate even to those who don't understand me. And even without understanding me, they still listen. It's not pride. It's the truth. It's the truth. That's the difference between a learning spirit and a learned man. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned to know how to speak a word to him that is weary in season. He's given us the understanding to appeal to your season that when you're in this meeting and you're listening to me, you think I'm speaking to you alone. And your neighbor also thinks I'm speaking to him alone. And the guy in the back thinks, no, 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 brother, it's not for him, it's mine. Because I, it, see, when you are learned man of God, you don't, you're not given what to speak. You're given how to speak. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You're given the wisdom of how to speak. And he wakeneth my ear night and day. He wakeneth my ear night and day to hear as the land. How does a land man hear? A land man needs just two or three words to summarize an oracle that he might preach for ten years. That's a land man. The Bible says, and the scriptures for us seeing that God would justify the Gentiles through faith, he went afore and preached this gospel to Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. He preached the whole New Testament in seven words. And Jesus says, your, your father Abraham saw my day and he was glad. He rejoiced. God told Abraham the whole New Testament in seven words. You've been studying the New Testament since you got born again in 1975. You've failed to understand the doctrine of righteousness imputed through faith. But this also has a reason, oh sorry, this also has an explanation that correlates with why you have stayed where you are. The problem now with our generation is they don't understand these things. They're going in Sangomas who appear in the names of prophets. Oh, this is why you're stuck. This is why your mother, this is why your father cannot do it. Well, I'm a prophet. I can prophesy. I see those things. But that is for people who, we, who don't hear God. We help them. If, if you want me to help you because you can't hear God, I'll help you. But the New Testament church is not set on the leadership of a prophet. It's set on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He said, for as many as the led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. The heels, the word their heels is the mature ones. When you mature, you're led by the Holy Spirit. Every prophet who comes just confirms. That's and now you see the challenge of a man who might lose his way and purpose because he received a prophetic word. Huh? Listen. He received a prophetic word without the leading of the Spirit. It, it, it's not wrong. It's just not full. In the New Testament, we have a man called Agabus. You remember the man called Agabus? One time he came and he tied himself the girdle of who? Was it Paul? Then he said, the owner of this girdle, like I've tied my hands, he's going to be tied when he goes to Jerusalem. And the Bible says, and the people around Paul started pleading, please Paul, don't go. They're going to arrest you. The prophet has spoken. And Paul says, I am not only ready to be imprisoned, I'm also ready to die in Jerusalem. Why? Because the necessity laid on me to go to Jerusalem is more important than the prophet's eye that has seen my imprisonment. And I can tell you why it was so. Because you see, when he tells them, tarry in Jerusalem until the Spirit comes, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, you realize all of the apostles, when they were consecrated in Jerusalem, all of them went to Antioch. All of them. Why? Because in Antioch there was much teaching. Agabus skipped Antioch and went to Judea. So he was an accurate and true prophet which was not yet taught. 
How many are with me? (laughs) Because I now have left some of you. So he can only see by the gift of God on his life. But he carries no revelation of the full counsel of God. You can be accurate yet not true. But when you're in a generation where your God doesn't speak, you only look for accuracy. And then you look at this individual, 20 years, 30 years, they've prophesied and lied and everything, but nothing has changed on your life. Nothing. You're just growing more hair and going to the saloon and sh- changing its size and then buying a green bag and then buying a shoe and then 10 years down the road, you're the same old person. Nothing different from the heathen. Only that you're guaranteed to go to heaven. Because we think we are going to skip the wisdom. You do all you want, go around circles, go around Jericho, do everything, you're still going to come back. If that's what God needed for Paul to lay the foundation of the New Testament, brother, you need it. You don't need the wisdom. You need the manifold wisdom. You need something on your life, woman of God, this evening that cannot be searched. He called it unsearchable. God wants to put something on somebody this evening. I don't know who I'm talking to. God wants to put something on somebody this evening. That somebody will say, this is not in an encyclopedia. This one is not on a CD. It was not somebody's line in a song. It wasn't a prophetic way like he saw on television. This is uniquely distinct. Because it's from God. And it reveals another facet of the wisdom of God. Get me a man with that kind of frequency. And I'll show you somebody. Wherever they will go, they will conquer. Because this is the power that conquers the world. Wisdom, the Bible says, is the mother of all inventions. Everything is stabbed on this man, this person called wisdom. You're asking for a job. You don't need a job. You just need to connect to something. You don't need a car. You don't need a paycheck. You don't need a promotion. You just need to know God a certain way. You just need to know God a certain way. You just need to know God a certain way. You you just need to get tired of where you know God from. Get tired of that level. This evening, tell God, I'm shaking off what I know. I want to connect to something that I have never read. He says, I wisdom dwell with prudence. And I find out the knowledge of things. Forget everything you know and tell God, give me something fresh. Because if it's, if it, if it's not enough to take me out of where I'm at, then I think I need the next level. Listen, with all the wisdom on your life, you failed to parent, and that's the thing you're going back on to first on and pray with. No. If what you have on you is not enough to keep a marriage, ask for something that not only will keep a marriage, but will multiply to help others keep marriages too. Blessed to be a blessing. Somebody shout amen. So like I said, many of us are in the generic realm where you understand scripture only from the generic and then you see God go from the generic and then he starts to introduce wisdoms uh, that come through parables huh? the kingdom of God is like an ant when you see the parables you've now gone into the next dimension of wisdom and then from there he you see him hiding in Proverbs. It has shifted from general knowledge, don't steal this. And then it goes into Proverbs. It goes into parables. And the Bible says, without parables, speak he not unto them. Because he was speaking in third and fourth dimensions of Revelation. They are so simple as they are so deep. And as you continue to go deeper into the revelation, you go to the fourth dimension where he, 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 he literally goes away from the generic 
and carries a story and language that has no connection with the generic, yet by the spirit you can connect. That's why some people can't read books like the Song of Solomon. Because they say, breasts, my lover, the lips, he kisses me. <laughs> yet they tell you Jewish rabbis that when they read that book, they even take off their feet because of how, their shoes, sorry, because of how holy it is. I told people I learned intimacy with God through that book. I learned the heart of God through the book of Song of Songs in how he relates with us intimately. You see? Now, you read a book like Proverbs. Proverbs to the intent that this young man, the Bible says, will receive subtlety because God wants to take this man out of the simplicity. You know, that's what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 1, let's read the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion. Where did he begin from? Listen, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, and to receive the instruction of wisdom, which is knowledge. You see? You cannot, again, I repeat, know wisdom. And you cannot receive the instructions of wisdom before you know wisdom. Neither can you receive the instructions of wisdom without understanding. That's what he has said here. To the intent that he might make you subtle, wise in the spirit. Wise in the spirit. You meet a circumstance and the wisdom of God switches on. And you do something and the principalities of this world are like, what just happened? Again, let me tell you. Even Saturn doesn't know God. He was an angel. God has never dwelt in him. He doesn't know God the way you know God. Because this is the mystery that was hid from the ages. Pastor now revealed Christ in us. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm sorry, I can't spare time. And I'm not going to spare you, I promise. Even if you don't understand, I'm sorry. I'll go with those who have understood. But we are running out of time. Tell your neighbor, we are running out of time. That's why Proverbs 1.14 speaks of how they have loved simplicity. He says, how long will you love simplicity? How long will your ears be dull? Today, the power of, I mean, in the altar, it is hard to explain even the simplest context, concepts in scripture. People have, super, have, 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 have substituted demonstration of power with illustration. They have to get a glass of water to show you how the Holy Spirit enters a person. This, a man has to get a ladder on a, on a stage to understand what it means to ascend to the next glory. These were things in the early church that were simply imprinted by the ministry of the Holy Spirit because these men knew how to cast vision by divine vocabulary. He speaks something and then you see its vision. That's how the Paul's ministered. You have the scripture. He says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. In Ephesians, he says that the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light, you will know. Every ministry in the early church came with a vision cast on a man's spirit. Because with the right vision cast, without vision cast on a man, you cannot change a man's soul. Even Satan knew it. That is why when he was tempting Adam and Eve in the garden, the Bible says, after telling them what the fruit would do, the Bible says, scripture, the woman's soul, that the tree was pleasant for food. Eh? Pleasant to the eye, sorry. Good for food and able to make one wise. You remember the scripture? That's why Eve got it. Because she got a vision of it. If Satan knew that without placing a vision on the eye of a man as you are delivering an oracle, you cannot transform them and cause them to agree with your instruction. 
That he copied because he knew that's the way of God. Everything God has given for man to respond, agree, and obey. He has cast a vision for every thought he has put in the man's spirit. If you are a minister and in your speech, in whatever you're speaking, you cannot cast a vision on a man's spirit to see and carry the full experience. They call them epiphanies. That's what separates theology from theophany. I don't just know about him. I have experienced him as you teach him. How else do you tell somebody, I'm going to pray for you to heal and they believe it? Because your, your voice comes with your authority. And this is all in this manifold wisdom. He teaches you how to speak. You can't go with that tongue and fail to get a job in an interview. Because you, 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 everything you're speaking, they see. How do you think we grew? I had a group of six young kids, 12, 8. And everything I was telling them, I could cast a vision. They could see it. And these are the people with which we've built the ministry. We have churches across the world. But it began with what we, could, we were able to cast. What we were able to cast. Why do you think... Have you ever asked yourself, now a mystery, why if so, and Adam did? Because women are more susceptible to catch visions than men are. Because their nature is conception. It's the concept, the idea. Did you get it? Why, how do you think a woman makes a baby? It's concept. They get the vision. It's that vision that imprints and starts to grow muscle and bone and makes a child. That is why he said that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. That seed had to come out of some womb. Did you get what I just said? Why do you think he deals with the church as a woman? Because he's the groom imprinting vision on the church. And as we behold him like in a mirror. Hey! As we behold the glory of God, we are metamorphosed. It's the casting of that image that changes our countenance, that changes our person. Let me tell you something. We are not just human beings. There is something on us that makes us different. You're sitting next to that man and they have eyes and ears and you think that's all they are. But they're bigger. They're more than what you see. She's not just a woman in red seated next to you, woman. The, the Bible has called you a holy priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are not normal. There are things normal people can't do. Years ago, I was from preaching the gospel and I got so tired. It's been three days, two, three days of preaching. I got so tired and I was driving myself back home. I reached the petrol station. I almost wanted to park. But I just wanted to go home. And so I closed my eyes and I said, Father, I am tired. And then something took over in that sentence, I'm tired. And I remember my eyes falling. And when they fell, my head told me, you're going to ram into somebody. You're going to knock something. I woke up like this. Because I was driving. When I woke up, I was at the gate. It took me three months or four to tell people what I had experienced. I was at the gate. I don't know how I reached that gate. You don't need to believe me. But you see, when you read a story like a man, uh, Philip, he gets a eunuch and puts him in water. And he gets up and he's disappeared. And the Bible says he was found at Azotus. How is people saying, where is this guy? Have you heard about him? Do you know where he is? And the man was found at Azotus. And it was not a surprise. Because with God, all things are 
impossible. What can't you get in your head? This is very simple. With God, all things are possible. Don't limit God to where you are because you're flesh and blood and you breathe oxygen in and out. I'm living proof I've seen this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Don't think that you're what, you're what you see. This is nothing. This is nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. The spirit that is in you is a quickening spirit. It's a life-giving spirit. He's able to do things that you have never... He said exceedingly abundantly. Have you ever read that portion of scripture in the Amplified Version? Because if you don't understand yourself, huh? exceedingly abundantly above that which we dare to ask all things. Have you ever read that portion of scripture? C can we look for it? Or can somebody get it up for me because of time? I want to finish. I want to pray. You look tired. <laughs> Let me, yeah, give me the amplified. Now I want, I want all of you to read with me. One, two, three, let's go. Now to him, by, in consequence of the action of his power, that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose. Far over, above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, dreams. Can you just scream for 10 seconds? Listen to me. God has said, there is a power in you that can work higher than any you can ever imagine. And it is at work in you. That means what you have in you is bigger than what you even think or can think. Your mind is just adopting and learning. Your mind is just adopting and learning. You, you don't even know what you can do. You don't even know what you are able to do. The first time I saw a short leg, there was a girl with a short leg. I was worshipping in a church in Entebbe. And there's a girl with a short leg who was here. And the people knew. So as I'm worshipping, they interrupt the meeting and start screaming. And they stop worshipping. And the leg had gone straight. The leg had gone straight. I never thought that I was going to be a preacher. I never thought I could preach because I never even understood the Bible. But all I knew is that when I got this mic, I didn't need a mic anyway. When I went on my knees, there was something about this thing of worshiping God that quite gave me a language that I didn't know. And it, it's that language that went on a crippled bone and spoke to it and it stretched out. Now, it's to that intent that I learned that day that even with worship, a blind eye can open, a dead, boy, a dead body can rise. It's just by simply saying, you are God. Do you know how much power you have? That you can just raise your hands and say, Father, I thank you. And the tumor disappears now. If you're here and you have a swelling in your body, you came with any swelling, either in your stomach or in your armpit or in your any part of your body or any part, any part. I want you to touch that swelling and see whether it's still there. If it has disappeared, where you were, you clap. If you came with a swelling and it has disappeared, wherever you were, you what? You came with a swelling, it has disappeared, just start clapping right now. Clap. If you swear, came with a swelling and it has disappeared, you feel it, it's no longer there. Clap, I want to hear you clapping. You know what has just happened? Tumors just disappeared. And you know you don't know. Because you don't know that wisdom. What, 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 what was wrong with you, brother? I saw a hand there clapping. C come, come on to here. Somebody clap this side. I want, come and tell me what, what has disappeared while I was speaking. <laughs>
You see, some of you must understand that God is not limited to where you are. You can clap yourself out of poverty. If you came with a swelling and it has disappeared, come here. Come here. See the power of God. See the power of God. See the power of God. What, what, what swelling did you come with? Give me my mic. You have a swelling? Yeah? Yeah? I had a big pain. Yours was a pain? Yes. It's gone? Yes. That's okay. Praise God. I want somebody who, you came with a swelling and you feel it, it has gone. Come, wherever you are. I see she's out. Give her a mic. She can't speak. Yes? Amen. Last, mm -hmm. uh, last night, after the service, mm -hmm. I just started feeling so much pain in my stomach. I even told the girls that I was with that I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. And when I came to church, I was just sitting down. But it's gone. What has happened? It's gone. Like, there was I, something in your yeah, stomach? Yeah, it was stomach. And it's gone? Yes. Praise God. Check yourselves. Somebody check yourselves. I feel God is doing more. Swellings are disappearing now. Now. One is already out. I, I want to hear her story. If you came with any swelling in your back, in your armpit, in your stomach, anything that you feel, anything, check yourself. Swellings are disappearing now. Now. Come, come. If something has left, come. Any swelling, I feel God is healing somebody. I feel God. Come. If you've been healed, come. Check yourself. In your stomach, you came with swellings in your stomach. Hello. Can she speak? Can she speak? Were so They've just gone so back. Now it's checking. Has it gone back? <laughs> Speak loud. Um, the pain, I had pain uh -huh. all over my feet. And now it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You still feel the pain, swelling? No, 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 no Stand pain. Up. Stand up. No pain. No pain. No pain. Do you feel the swelling anymore? was it arthritis what was it but there was swelling and pain speak give her the mic huh? Huh? it was paining it and? was paining this morning mm -hmm. and I couldn't walk properly you couldn't walk yes, sir. show me how you were walking when you came now you feel it healed she came with a swelling and a limb but the moment I spoke challenge she can't talk that's what the anointing does. That's what the anointing does. If you're here and you have a swelling, check yourself. Check yourself. You came with something, uh, hernia, fibroid in the stomach, check yourself. If you feel it has disappeared, you come. Come and tell me what happened. Give her a mic. What, what, what disappeared? I had arthritis that I, I could not sleep in my legs would be swollen. Were your legs swollen? They no, they no longer know how can... They Do came you... swollen? They came swelling. They've just gone back? They got back and my stomach is... Huh? And my stomach is... It was affecting my stomach to cause suppression because of the swelling of the muscle. You came with swollen legs? Yes, I came with swollen They've swell. gone back? They've gone back, even the knees. I couldn't do like this. Praise the Lord. And I believe also my sister's son who's in the hospital, he received the same grace. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So, somebody came with a swelling in their armpit, in their what? Knees. And they've gone back and they don't feel the arthritis anymore. I, I have not prayed. So, what happens if I pray? <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? 
And the Lord tells me, as we continue to speak these few minutes I have, if you came with any swelling, today I've heard the voice tell me I'm taking swellings away. The moment it goes, the moment you feel a swelling has left you, you just come and testify, even as I'm teaching. I want to finish. But even as I'm teaching, if you check yourself, your armpit, you, you came with a swelling in your breast, somebody came with a swelling. Huh? Give her a mic. Give her a mic. Huh? Give me the mic. What did you have? Uh, when Speak I, louder. When I was pregnant, I used to have this. Speak loud. When I was pregnant, I used to have these three swelling on my under my my breast mm -hmm. so today i just went to go and check because they've been there when i said yes you went to the bathroom to go and check myself for what sure. has happened they are gone huh? they are gone they are gone they are gone come on let's celebrate jesus three swellings Below her breast, when I declared, she ran to the bathroom to check, and all the three have disappeared. That is the wisdom of God. If you're here and you have a problem with your ear, and one ear is not hearing well, you just put your finger in and say, Father, I thank you. And then you check it. If it is hearing, you will come and testify. If your ear opens, because there are people, I see your ears. Somebody has been having trouble with the ear, but God is opening. If you hear like this and you feel the ear that has not been hearing is hearing, you come right now and testify. You run here because a miracle has taken place. You run here. You run here. Tell me. So, I was sleeping some few days ago and then something entered my ear and then it couldn't come out, but now it is perfect. Which is clear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Run quickly. Somebody's ears open. Somebody's ears open. Just check your ears. If you had a problem with your ear, check it. And if you hear it's working, I want you to come and testify very quickly. Bring her here. Come. Just check your ear. You probably had not been hearing or it had a problem hearing or give her the mic. Can you speak? Yes. Okay, speak. I've got a problem of ears for the for four years now mm -hmm. it was something like it's, it's getting inside and it's coming out uh -huh. when you preach there is something that is, is moving here from my ears what has so, happened to your ears I don't know are you healed or not yes I am healed <laughs> father I thank you because you have healed those ears in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Check yourself if you have a hearing issue. If you have, sorry, I'm teaching, but I felt I needed to minister to some people. And I, I don't know how to interrupt what God is doing. If you came with a back problem, bad back problem, and you've not been able to bend, huh? I want you to stand up and try. If you feel the pain has left, run here. Anybody, you came with a back problem, you try to bend like this. If the pain has left, you run here. Your name. Check your back. If you came with a back problem and you say, Today I feel like my back now is there's no pain. Run here. Check yourself. God is healing somebody's back this evening. Thank you, Jesus. God is healing somebody's back. If you came with a back problem, you check yourself like this. If you no longer feel the pain, I feel like somebody's back is getting healed right now. You come. Come and testify what God has done. Yes? Huh? Come. Come. If you feel your back has healed, come quickly. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Speak loud. Thank you, Jesus. I've 
I've been struggling with this back problem. It's almost two months now. How many years? It's almost two months now. Uh -huh. Yeah, this year I might bend over, I could feel like as if something is cracking and it even went down to my knees. Uh -huh. But now I feel free. Bend and I see. No pain? Give her the mic. No pain? No pain at all. Put up your hands. Can I pray for you to heal the sick as well? Amen. Father, I bless you. Because she's going to heal the sick as well. And anybody else? Yes, tell me. Hi. Hi. Uh, so this morning I woke up with a really bad back. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even lean all. Oh, sorry, excuse. I couldn't even lean all the way back without my back uh -huh. being like super painful. Yeah. I mean, it got to the point where I couldn't even lean my hips. So now you're healed. Perfect. You have a testimony to keep. <laughs> yes. Um, so in two weeks' time, I mean two weeks back, uh, I fell on my back. I don't know what I slipped um, on, right? So I fell on my back and my head, and then my my head was fine. And then uh, I couldn't bend. I couldn't do anything. I even like couldn't breathe. Like breathe in. Like mm. I couldn't at all. And now for two weeks to date, as you've healed now. I'm so bent. Bend and I see. No pain. Good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh huh. I, I, um, I, yes. He has been a patient of mine. Uh, he has had such severe back pain to a point where his work was in jeopardy. Yeah. And I believe he's received his healing last night. He did yesterday. No, he yes. just prayed in the evening and the, the pain left. He told me he slept like a baby. Yep. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, listen to this. Mama, have you been healed of anything? What? Yes. and, and uh, Tell me what God has done. Now I hear. You were not hearing well? Yes. Now the ears have opened. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Now, let me continue. Let me, give me five minutes to finish my service. I did not demonstrate this to prove to you that Jesus can heal. But I wanted to show you, years ago the Lord told me in a vision, no, it was an instruction, and he told me from today you will not need to pray for the sick. And he told me you just need to say something, I will do it. You understand? <laughs> so, if somebody says, I came with swollen legs, I came with three swellings. Three. And she went in the bathroom and there is no swelling. Mama's ears have opened. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes the miraculous can be so easy that it will be so hard to believe because some of you think you need to ro ba 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 so ba 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 no manifold wisdom manifold wisdom manifold wisdom I from that instruction it became harder for me to heal a sick person by praying than declaring are you following what i'm saying Recently, we were in a crusade, five people from deaf school started speaking and hearing. From deaf school, five. They started hearing and speaking. <laughs> and I didn't pray. I just declared. Some of you, you're entering a season of simply saying, it will work. <laughs> yeah, there's somebody, I don't know who, I don't know who, but there's somebody You've just entered a place where you're just going to declare a miracle and say, somebody is healed. And even if they don't have belief, or even if they have not prayed, even if they don't have yet faith, because of your word, God will bring out somebody to say, this is the word. But the Bible says, such confidence have we towards him. Do you know what it means? That why would I stand in front of a camera to say somebody is getting healed now? cameras are watching me on live stream where would I get the boldness to say 
that somebody's swelling is healing. Somebody's ears are healing. Somebody's back is healing. Because I know if I declare it, it will manifest. Even you, those of you, while we're still preaching, if a miracle happens to you, what, before I finish this few five minutes, you can come and testify. Don't, don't be interrupted by, by my, don't be, feel short-circuited by my teaching. Because in such atmospheres, things just happen. If anything has happened to you, don't even waste your time. You just come and say, this has happened while you were preaching. This has happened as while you were preaching. Has something happened in your life or you've come to sow a seed? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I want to finish. We are lying us to ourselves to think that the devil is intimidated by, you know, our congregations, our cameras, our lights, our equipment. No. What the devil fears most in this world is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. In whatever you have to pursue, if there is anything you should ask God for in this Excel conference, ask him something money cannot buy. Ask him something no other man can duplicate. Ask him for something that a copy of you that no other man has. A distinctive mark of yourself that no other man can duplicate. That's what's going to give you the distinction God wants to put on your life this evening. Praise the Lord Jesus. As we pray today, I see that God wants to take many people to the end of all things. I know that I'm taking many of you from so far. I know it and I feel it with every ounce of my being. That I'm taking many of you from so far. I'm literally laboring to, to save 10, 20 years of your understanding in these few minutes that I have. So it's not, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job because I have today and tomorrow only to go back home. But many years with you, of course. Praise the Lord. But I have dreamed of a generation, and this is the generation that is entering into the next level of revelation, next level of vision, next level of understanding, next level of the prophetic, next level of the healing, next level of the demystification of the mystery, next level of worship, next level of prayer, next level of faith. Somebody shout. Manifold wisdom. This is what the church lives for. Hallelujah. I'll say the rest tomorrow because I'm out of time. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Can you just take a few minutes and talk to God personally? is here. The power of God is here. The power of God is here. The power of God is here. God is here. The Bible says he has been made our wisdom. Just plug into it.
just plug into it. There is a chosen vessel in this room 
I'm not talking about cold, but there's a chosen vessel in this room. And this sermon today is what you needed. You have always asked God for revelation. You have always prayed and said, Father, I want to know you through your word. But it has been a struggle in your spirit to connect. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God is coming upon you right now. Power of the Holy Ghost! From today you receive such a unique insight. And even those who are watching life, you're receiving such a unique insight in the word of God. Your eyes have been opened today. You're going to see the wondrous things in the Lord. You're going to see the most amazing things. Revelation is going to hit your spirit in such a way. It's all you needed. 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 You needed it. And God has brought it this evening. From today, revelation is going to flow out of you. Revelation is going to flow out of you. Things are going to connect in your spirit. God is going to bring a certain understanding of things both new and old. Hey! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise and say, Father, I receive it all. I connect to the wisdom you have given me by Christ. Tell him, Father, I take it all as you have spoken it. In the name of Jesus, he has been made my wisdom. And so today, I connect my understanding. I connect my mind to what you have done in me, in Christ Jesus. Revelation is mine, defied. My eyes can see. My ears can hear. My heart can understand. I'm changing South Africa. I'm changing Africa. I'm changing the world. Something new is coming out of my spirit for the world. The world is going to see things eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and has not entered the hearts of men. The spirit of God has marked me today for the next level of the manifold wisdoms that are, can only come from God. Somebody shout amen. Celebrate Jesus. 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 Something is happening in your house. 
something is happening in your ministry something is happening in your body something is happening in your business something is happening in your marriage something is happening with your children something is happening at the house of treasures celebrate Jesus and say I receive it all more thing. If you are here and you say today Apostle Grace I want to have a relationship with Jesus. That Jesus you're talking about. The one I've seen take three tumors off a woman's body. Three swellings left before our eyes. Arthritis healed before our eyes. Ears healed before our eyes. Somebody says, I want to begin a relationship with that Jesus who carries such wisdom and grace. I want to walk with him. I want to give my life to him. I want to submit to him. Listen, God doesn't want you ready. You, you don't need to be ready. You just need to say, I need you. He will make you ready. Don't say, let me fast. No, 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 don't, don't fix yourself. Just say, today, I feel I need that Jesus and I want to come the way I am. Don't ask yourself, ah, now what if I mess up? What if I make a mistake next week or next? No, 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 no. At least tell him this evening, today I've given you my heart. You fix the rest. So if you're there and you say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to receive him. Come and I pray with you. Come and I pray with you. I want to be born again. Come. with you this evening. preach the gospel. This woman is a preacher. Spirit of a sovereign Lord, I thank you. I see a preaching grace on her life. God is going to use her. Come on, come. Hey, 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 hey. You say, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Run here. Two more people I'm waiting for. Two more. Two more. Two more. There's somebody you're just fighting. Yet your fighting days are over. Let me give you one more chance. Come now. Today is your day, not next week. You're fighting in your heart, but today is your day. She's there. She has come. <laughs> oh. You know. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for the gift of Jesus, that he died for my sins and was raised for my glory. 
today. I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. I am born again. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, among these have been dealing with drugs, trouble, sickness, rejection. Today you deliver them from all witchcraft. Go in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft, I command you to leave. Every spirit of witchcraft, I command you to leave. Go! Heart disease, I speak healing. Every point of bondage is healed. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a manageable praise. This is your church. This is your church. This is your church. This is your pastor. Why don't you put your hands together for Jesus? Now, I just need you to do one more thing. One more. Please don't go anywhere. Um, all of you here, can you just go with our sister right there? We want to take your name and your phone number so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision. Can you just go with them quickly for two minutes? Just go with them, the lady, sister in red. Just go with them quickly. They want to just take your details. Quickly. 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 Church, keep, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Oh, keep clapping. Are they still going? They're still going. Keep clapping. How many of you received your impartation tonight? You know, church, I was telling the pastors today, I said something to the pastors. You know, the Bible says that in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, that Jesus was made the, the, is the visible image of God. So God is invisible. Say that Jesus became the image of the invisible God. Somebody say the invisible God. Now, church, we know that God is invisible, but Jesus became the image of the visible God. That means we have the invisible God and we have visible Jesus. Are we together, church? I was sharing this with the pastors. I said, do you know what happens when we gather in a place like this? We are dealing with the invisible things. That by the time you leave Excel, everything that eyes could not see will be made visible in your life. Are we together? Don't ever think you are wasting your time by gathering in a place like this. He said something about positioning. Your coming here tonight was a divine positioning. Because the kind of wisdom you have received tonight, you will run with it and generations will be benefiting from it. Because through, a, 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 through wisdom, a house is built. The Bible says by wisdom, God founded the whole earth on water. By wisdom. And when you have that kind of wisdom, you can build anything. And that's what you have received tonight. I said that is what you have received tonight. Somebody shout, I have the manifold wisdom of God. Oh, like you are serious. Prophesy, I have the manifold wisdom of God. Oh yeah, glory to God. Church of God, why don't you help me celebrate the gift of God. Apostle Grace Lupega. Let's celebrate Jesus for his life. What a gift to the body. What a gift in our generation. We love you, sir. We love you. We love you. Very simple, but man, depth. We were journeying in realms. 
I was sitting there before I catch up with one, he has moved. I had to catch up. I said, Lord, wake me up. Wake. You know, you know when you doze off and you wake up, you know, I'm like, geez, this is who? Aya. Uh -huh. Out of your belly. Aya. Uh -huh. Shall flow. Shall flow. Some of you have no idea what has happened to you. You have no idea. Many of you pastors, when you go back home, your ministry, your ministry will not be what eyes have seen before. It will not be what ears have heard before. Am I talking to somebody? We thank God for his mercy. Now tomorrow is the grand finale of our conference. Tomorrow morning. I don't have to invite you. If you like, stay away. That's all I'm going to say to you. If you like what? He mentioned positioning. You know, my mother taught me something years ago when I was a little baby. Whenever they want to, in Nigeria, we cook soups like a goosey, okra, bitter leaf, okbono, yeah, many soup. So, many of us, when my mother wants to dish up, she dishes up the top part of the soup. All of us are waiting for the bottom part because that's where the whole ingredient settles. How many of you know it's the sweetest part? Mm, yeah. So tomorrow is the bottom part of the pot. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you want to miss out, it's up to you. But if I were you, I would come here for positioning to receive all that God has for me. And I thank God for giving us this opportunity to connect with this grace. And you know, for me, it's a... Let me tell you what he said in my office. You know me, I'm, I'm, I leak secrets. They brought food to them and he, the people he came with didn't want to eat. He said, hey guys, we didn't come to preach. This is now home. This is now home. <laughs> and he said to them, if you don't eat, that is pride. Pride go ahead before a fall. Everybody dived into the food one time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is now home. This is now home. That means we will see more and more of Apostle Grace Lupega. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you. These are the kind of, you know, when you have this kind of people as friends and you connect to people like this, you know you, you are secured. You just, yeah. So that, that's how I choose friends. I choose my tribe. I don't just connect with anyone. I choose my tribe. If you notice something about me, I choose my tribe. I choose my tribe. I always love these very simple men. Very simple looking. Me, I'm not. I'm not that. I, I, look, I look very complicated. Amen. I'm a mystery to many of you. But I, I just love, there's something that attracts me to men like this. Just in their simplicity, humility, I learn a lot from them. I'm telling you, their humility just does something to me. And I thank you for reaching out and saying, hey, we'll hold your hands and we'll do this thing together in South Africa. <laughs> Amen. This nation will never be the same again after this conference. Never, never. I know that. I can feel the vibrations in the spirit. Tell you. Some of you are going to build businesses that will be in billions. In billions, in billions. I'm telling you, in billions. It will be said that through Excel Conference, somebody here built a business that employed 10,000 people. I'm telling you. Watch what happens in your life. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. Lift up your hands to heaven. Give God thanks once more. Thank him. Thank him for this privilege. Thank him that he loved us so much and positioned us for such a time as this. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We are grateful, Father, for sending us your servant, sending us all these graces that came in this week. Oh, God, 
from your servant, Reverend Chris Matebula. Oh God, to Nick, Apostle Nikki van der Beesteze, to Reverend Ike Wanze, Father Lord, to Dr. Dr. Mashishi. Father, we thank you for all these graces. And now your servant, Apostle Grace Lubega, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We return all the glory to you. And we are declaring that tomorrow shall even be greater. The Bible says, as we behold you, as in a glass, the glory of God, we, shall, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. Lord, that tomorrow it shall be another dimension and level of glory. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Amen. As you go, go in this grace and conquer your world. In Jesus' name. We love you. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. God bless you.